it now becomes the duty of the court to impose sentence in this case, and that is to see that this defendant never again has the opportunity to walk the streets of our community as a free man. Hello, welcome to the Maximum Sentence channel, where we discuss recent crimes and convictions and a maximum penalty handed down. My name is Paco Rivero. You can also follow me on Facebook for updates. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. Perry Mason was 31 years old in 2019. She grew up and went to school in Kalihi in Hawaii and attended Farrington High School in Honolulu. It's no coincidence that Perry Mason appears to have the same name as the fictional defense attorney played by Raymond Burr in the 1950s and 60s TV series of the same name. Perry's father, the Victor King Mason, who resides in Cambodia in Asia, stated that he was a huge fan of the show and named his daughter after him. I have also been a big fan of the Perry Mason TV series. Perry had two sons, but the relationship with the father had ended. At some point, she fell in love with a man named Jason Watson, but he was living in Connecticut. By 2018, Perry and her two boys, at this time ages 9 and 10, moved to Connecticut and settled in the city of Meriden to be closer to her boyfriend. Perry resided on West Main Street in Meriden. Perry began working as a court reporter in the courthouse and she also specialized in doing eyelashes and took appointments to do that at her eyelash business. Jason Watson and Perry eventually began living together. Watson also had two children in his custody from a previous relationship, so there were now four children in the home. In 2019, he was 38 years old and he worked at a textile plant facility in nearby Waterbury, Connecticut, a building being used for recycling clothing for donations. He was a warehouse supervisor there. The relationship, however, was rocky and by mid-August of 2019, the two had split up. On Thursday, August 15th, Jason Watson went to the home of Perry Mason and he assaulted her, striking her several times and then choking her until she blacked out. He then left. When Perry came to, she called her sister Val Horlbeck, who lives in Georgia, and she told her what happened. Perry refused to report the matter to police, but she took photos of her injuries, which included a puffed up bloody lip and sent those pictures to her sister. Three days later, on Sunday, August 18th, Jason Watson called Meriden police to report that Perry Mason is missing. He also posted on his Facebook some pictures with the message, Missing You. Watson told police that Perry had gotten angry with him and left and never returned. Coincidentally, Perry's sister, Vow, in Georgia, also called Meriden police that same day to report that her sister is missing and said that she has not been able to contact her sister the past two days and that they speak every day on the phone, no less than three times a day, and that Perry would have never abandoned her two boys. The sister also told police that Jason Watson had assaulted and choked Perry on Thursday, causing her to black out. Val sent the pictures of Perry's injuries to Meriden police. The sister told police that Perry did not want to report the assault because she was afraid of getting Jason in trouble. A woman had also reported that she had an eyelash appointment with Perry the day before on Saturday morning, but that Perry did not show up, which is highly unusual of her. By Monday morning, Perry's co-workers at the courthouse knew something was wrong when she didn't show up for work there either, and Perry had never missed a day of work.
As with anybody that would receive news like this, they're extremely distraught. Uh, obviously, this is why we've been very, um, you know, sensitive to that. It is very important that we come to a, you know, a successful conclusion in this. We want to make sure that we do this investigation properly. A full investigation of the missing mother had been underway, and the media was covering the story when they witnessed police arresting Jason Watson for the domestic assault on Perry Mason that past Thursday from information and pictures sent by Perry's sister in Georgia. Investigators continued the search for the missing woman while Watson remained in custody. It was learned during the investigation that Watson is a convicted felon and registered sex offender with a 22-year criminal history. It is unknown if Perry was aware of Watson's criminal background during the time that she was with him. While Watson was in custody for the domestic assault charges, investigators learned that he was at his workplace at the textile facility in Waterbury and his vehicle was parked in the parking lot on a day that he was not scheduled for work. By Wednesday, August 21st, investigators had learned that Watson's cell phone location data and surveillance cameras from his workplace showed that Perry Mason's Volkswagen Jetta was driven from her home to the plant where he worked on Saturday, August 17th. Watson is seen on video entering the building and moments later, all cameras on the property stopped recording. A search team went out to the building in Waterbury and searched the woods around the parking lot. They ultimately found several garbage bags with charred human remains, burned remains, and those remains of the body were later identified as Perry Mason. Reports state that the body was also crushed, though it is unknown how exactly that was done. We regret to inform that the body that was uh, found yesterday was the body of uh, Miss Perry Mason. A forensics team had searched the entire home that Watson and Perry had shared, but nothing of evidentiary value was found there. The location of where exactly the crime took place, as far as crushing and burning the body, is not really known. Watson's cell phone location records also showed him going to a Walmart in Wallingford, Connecticut, and video showed him buying lighter fluid. The cell phone data then showed him returning to his workplace. It's a good thing that these Stupid criminals keep their cell phone on and with them when they are committing these crimes. The business where Watson worked also has an industrial compactor that police said could have been used to crush the body, but no forensics evidence of that was found. That same Wednesday that the remains of Perry Mason were found, Jason Watson was charged with the murder. This is the arraignment of Jason Watson, filing it in 236, the allegations of murder. In November of last year, 2023, Jason Watson, who is now 41, pleaded guilty to the murder of Perry Mason. And this past month, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. If he is not paroled during that time, he will be 72 years old when he is released. From prison. Reports appear to indicate that Perry's sister, Val, was granted custody of Perry's two boys. Please remember to subscribe here on YouTube for more of these true crime stories. You can also follow me on Facebook for updates. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. Take care and bye for now.